All right, welcome to Hidabrut International. Let's have a little conversation. Hidabrut means a conversation. Now, you know, we just had the Yontav of Pesach. Now it leads, it's a preparation for Shvuos, the holiday of weeks. We count the Omer seven weeks. Seven times seven is 49 days. Seven weeks of seven is 49 days. On the 50th day, at the beginning of the eighth week, we have Shvuos. Why is that eight? Anyone who knows something about numerology and knows that eight is higher than nature. There's seven colors. Eight is higher than that. There's seven chords of music. The next octave is act eight, the next one. It's a higher level. Coming out of Mitzrayim, you were physically freed, and now in Shavuos, you're spiritually freed. What does that mean? Pesach was, you had cheros, freedom. Now, seven weeks later, you're preparing yourself, 49 days, you count the Omer every night, for liberty to make the right choice. You went to, in the desert, five million people, in the desert. Nothing, nothing. How do you live? How do you live? What grows there? Five million people, where's the water? Where's the... Of course, as you know, if you know the Torah, it was a miracle. They existed. And millions of them came to 40 years later to their Eretz Canaan. How did they make that? Well, man fell from heaven every day. How else will you explain that nothing grows in the desert? And water, Miriam's well followed them. They had enough water every day. It followed them, and it broke into 12 channels. Every tribe had its own section, 12 channels. They, drew, they lived on man and water. Ah, but you need proteins and minerals and vitamin A and B and K and B12, B this and D and calcium and boo, blah, everything, protein. The man had everything in it. Everything. You thought about strawberry shortcake, that's what it tasted like. You thought about steak, that's what it tasted like. It was miraculous food for a miraculous nation that came out of Mitzrayim miraculously after 210 years. God gave them freedom. Total chayrus, physical. Now we're going to give you a free choice. Will you accept the Torah or not? Liberty means, I told you in the last video, chayrus means I come out of jail, so now I'm free. Free. I'm not a slave. But liberty means I can choose to go here, to go here, to go there, to go there, to go to this school, that school, take this job, that job, wear this suit, kind of that other kind of suit. I have liberty to do what I want. So they came to, to the uh, high Mount Sinai in the middle of the desert. Nothing is there. Seven weeks later, and we count the Sefirah, the counting every night from Pesach until Shavuos. Shavuos is called weeks, seven weeks. Also, Shavuos means two promises. They made at Sinai, at Sinai. Na seven nishma, when they heard the voice of God, and he said the Ten Commandments, Laseros Adibros, ten, which represents all the myths, commandments of the Torah, 613, because 613 is ten. And 10, you take away the zeros, one, given by one creator. There's only one God, one creator, period. And they said, Nasa, let, we will do it. The Nishma, then we'll listen, we'll work it out the rest of our life to study how it works. Is that the way it works? You practice medicine, then you go to medical school? Is that how you do it? Is that how you do it? Isn't it first the other way around? First, you listen and understand and learn. And then you do it. How could it be at Sinai, nah, say we do it first? Then in Nishma, then we're going to learn about it. How can you do it? What are you, what are you doing? How do you do it? How do you know how to hold the lulav? How do, what matzah or hummus? What's on pesa? Well, which one should I eat? Four cups, three cups, ten cups. Well, how do you know what? The, why? Well, if you trust Hashem who saved your life, you don't have to know why. You just do it. You have a cell phone, right? You know how it works? You don't have to. It works. Turn on the light. You don't know. You don't have to know. It works perfectly. Do this thing. We're doing it for 3,300 years. It works great. In fact, you're still here. That's a proof. So Shavuos, we made two promises. Not of Anishma. However, every single day, three times a day, if you're an Orthodox Jew, you say just the opposite. You say the famous six words that you teach your child when he's able to talk. The first and the last thing before you die, you say those six words. Shema Yisrael. Listen, Jew. 
Hashem Elokeinu Hashem. God, our God, is one. Echad and Hashem and Elokeinu. Mercy and uh, judgment is all one. It's all one, really. When the doctor wants to operate on you and cut something off, he's doing you a favor, otherwise you can't live. When um, Hashem is mercy, Elokeinu is din, punishment. Hashem, that's all Hashem. Hashem wants you to survive. Echad is one concept. Then we say, Then you should love God with all your heart. Interesting. First, Shema, listen. If it makes sense, I'll do it. After it makes sense, and you fall in love with God and you do everything and it makes sense. How come by Shema, it's first listening, then Vahafta, then you love God because you make sense. Yahadu's Judaism makes sense, logical, made sense for the first Jew, Avroham, who was a pagan in the beginning. And he figured out nature, that the force behind all natural forces is an invisible force. And that he figured out. And when he was 70, God spoke to him. Avraham, Avraham. He said, yeah, what is it? I mean, you're God. Whew, 70. And Moshe at 80, God spoke to him. God doesn't come to you right away. You have to struggle and sacrifice, and then if you're convinced with your whole life that this is true, you'll make contact automatically, like you turn into a, the right frequency on the radio. You got it. If you're not tuned in right, you don't get it. You don't hear anything. You hear it if you're tuned in. So in Shavuos, they heard God's voice, which means when you hear from a man, I have to hear what you have to say. Then I'll, then I'll fall in love with the idea. That's if you hear from a person. But if the Creator speaks to you, one time in the history of mankind that the Creator spoke to five million people, five o'clock a.m., that was the Shabbat, the seventh day of Sivan, 40 days, nine days after they got out of Egypt. It was 2448, got, they came out of Egypt, 2448, seven weeks later, was Yom Shvi'i. Shavuos, Shvi, seven times seven, 49 days. The 50th day, God spoke to them. 50 is already in the eighth week. Eight is infinity. You know what the infinity sign looks like an eight? Everything supernatural is eight. You know, there's only seven colors, but there's eight is beyond that. It says when Mashiach comes, he's going to play on an eight-string harp. How can it be? There's only seven strings. There's a dimension above natural order. It's called supernatural. That God speaks to people, five million, and there's never been in the last... 3,300 years, another version of the Torah. Never, 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 never did they ever find the Sefer Torah with one letter different. There's 330,000 letters, not one is different. If it's a fiction, then every father told his son the exact same lie. If it's a lie, the exact same lie. That You know that's illogical. So therefore, at, at, at Shavuos, Pentecost, holiday, what the five books were given, at Shavuos, there was seven weeks, and also we made two promises, Nase Venishma. We will do it, and we will then study the rest of our life. Because God is speaking. You don't have to check it out. If a person tells you, like the Talmud, we think it about it, and then it makes sense when we do it. And if it makes sense to great people, you know it makes sense to our little mind. That takes care of Shavuos. You know, on way back, four weeks, seven weeks before Shavuos, we had to... Drink four cups of wine. How much do you got to drink? An ounce? Two ounces? Five ounces? Twenty ounces? You have to drink a certain amount, otherwise you're not yotzim. You have to eat a certain amount of matzah, a half of a, three quarters of a machine matzah, or maybe a third of a hand matzah. You have to have enough to be a kazai. You mean you crush down the matzah, take all the, all the air, crush it down, crush it down into a thing that would be a, a size of an olive. Zayas, kiz zayas. It's about three ounces, six on one side of your mouth. How much must the coast be, the cup? How much wine? This much? No. This is one and a half ounces. Well, who said it has to be a certain amount of ounces? Yeah, I'll tell you how you know. The uh, Talmud tells us that when you make Kiddush every Friday night or every Yontif, it has to be a coast. What is a coast? How much is that? It has to be three ounces. How, how do you figure that out? Because they tell us a lug, lug is a certain measure of liquid, is the displacement of six eggs. Lamed gimel, three and three is six. Six eggs and 
all over the world, if it's not jumbo and it's not mini, it's a regular large egg. They're all 1.85 or 1.95. They're light below two. Six eggs, lug, lemon, 33. Six, three, three, six. Six eggs times two ounces is 12. And we have to take a revius, a quarter of that. That's three. That's this amount, three ounces. That's all you need. It's even two. Six times two is 12. It's only 1.85, 1.9. So three ounces is 100% yotze. Some hold that the eggs got smaller over the last centuries. So we drink a little bit more. Four ounces. Some drink four and a half. You can drink, as long as you drink three. This four, almost five. I happen to like wine, it doesn't bother me. I drink a big cup. Nine ounces, because I don't have to, but I like it. As long as it's three ounces. This is a big cup. I enjoy wine, not 1%, the real stuff, 13%. Now, you only have to drink three ounces, four times. Why? Because that's the halakha, that's the rule. There's rules, you know. Two and two is four, that's a rule, right? There's rules. Look, I told you a way to remember it. Lamed Gimel, 33, three, six, six eggs times two ounces is about 12 ounces, and a revi is a quarter of that is three. You have to eat matzah. I told you the reason why matzah means a fight against natural order, interference. You don't let the dough rise. You crush it. You put holes in it. You bake it for 13 seconds. If you've ever been at a matzah bakery, 13 seconds. Flat, then it's matzah. You eat it. Take it into your system because God saved you with a nace. Interference with natural order. Chomets is natural order. It rises naturally. That's chomets. That means being a slave. Getting out of slavery, take a horde of slaves and make them the freest, most blue blood, VIP, aristocratic, pedigree nation on the planet Earth. That takes a nace, a miracle. A nace is interference with nature. Matzah is interference with nature. That's why it's matzah. You have to eat that. And you can't eat any chametz. Now, matzah and chametz, if you'd like numbers, I'm going to tell you something. Well, first, let's get rid of coats. Coast is 86. I'm going to tell you how much has to be in the cup. Uh, Coast is 86, 20 and uh, 6 and 60, 86. Do you know that there are 29 grams in an ounce? And 29 into 86 is 3. There you got it, 3 ounces. 29 grams in an ounce. And a Coast is 86. Uh, 29 to 86 is 3. Minimum of 3 ounces. You can drink more. Mm, interesting, isn't it? Now, let me tell you, matzah is 135, if you do the numerology. Chometz is 138. The difference is three. The difference between chometz and matzah is three things. Chometz you cannot eat on Passover. Forbidden to eat. Number two, you can't have any benefit from it. I can't buy it and sell it. I can't feed my dog beef with cereal in it. Years ago, they used to put up wallpaper with flour and water. I can't have it done within 30 days before Passover. I can't have any benefit from chomet. When I have a little uh, a fish, I can't feed them cereal. I have to give them worms, dehydrated worms. If I have a bird, I can't give them grain. I have to give them millet, rice. I can't have hanoa from chomet. When you sell your chomet to the rabbi, you can't. You have to sell the companies where you have a stock in a beer company because that's fermented uh, grain. Uh, Kellogg's, every company, whatever, any beer company, you have to sell those at ownership for eight days or ten days. You cannot own chametz. So eating is forbidden. I know enjoyment, even if you don't eat it. And then comes rishus. I can't own it. I'm not allowed to own it. If I have it in the house, I have to cover it up and sell it to the rabbi who sells it to a Gentile. Three things. Now, let me tell you something. When they were in Egypt... The first word God told them after they got out of Egypt at Sinai was Anochi. That is not a Jewish word, says the Mepharshim. It is an Egyptian word. It means eternal life. Because they understood. Pharaoh said he lives forever. Pharaoh said to the people, I made myself. Paro said he made himself, and I made, and I am that big animal that swims in the Nile. He means alligator, most dangerous animal in the Nile. He, Ani, Asisini, I made myself. I am the big creature that swims in the Nile. He made himself into a god, and the people believed it. 
So they understood the Jews, the assimilated Jews, that Anochi means eternal life. Do you know that in the 1960s, in the hippie generation, you ever, some people listening to me, maybe 70, 80, that knows, that used to wear a necklace. It had like a V, then it had a, hard, a gold or brass necklace, had a chain around the neck, and the chain come from the top of the V, and then they had a straight line, and then a U going down. I want to show you something. That's a word. That's God's name. Anochi, you see that? Anochi, I am God. Hmm? So you can write it in Hebrew in a, 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 a symbolic way. Aleph, doesn't have to be round. Final mem and a chaf, right? Now watch. When you turn this thing around, turn this 90 degrees to the left, you get an unk sign. Unk is anochi. They don't know it, but they took this from the first word of the Ten Commandments. Anochi is the Lushan Mitzri. Unk, that's what they called it. U-N-K or O-N-K. The hippies wore this. They had no idea. They knew it meant eternal life. They didn't know it meant the first Jewish word on the Sarah said, the Ten Commandments. Eternal life. They knew something was all mixed up. If you learn Torah, you learn everything about everything because it's the greatest knowledge. It represents all knowledges that ever came to mankind. Be good. Mm -hmm.